Here are the headlines for today. This story may likely shock and upset you. We want them infected. Just listen to that for a second. We want them infected. According to Politico, those words were said by a top Trump appointee, and that was his COVID-19 strategy. According to the report, the approach was to allow millions of Americans to be infected by the virus. A House watchdog got a hold of internal emails and shared them with Politico. In those emails, then science advisor Paul Alexander wrote this in an email. There is no other way. We need to establish herd, and it only comes about allowing the non-high-risk groups to expose themselves to the virus, period. Now, this email was sent July 4th to Alexander's boss, Health and Human Services Secretary, Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs, Michael Caputo, and also six other senior officials. And it goes on. Infants, kids, teens, young people, young adults, middle-aged with no conditions, etc., have zero to little risk. So we use them to develop herd. We want them infected. It's also being reported that Alexander also argued colleges should stay open to allow COVID-19 infections to spread. In a July 27th email to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Director Robert Redfield, he wrote, we essentially took off the battlefield the most potent weapon we had, younger, healthy people, children, teens, young people who we needed to fastly infect themselves, spread it around, develop immunity, and help stop the spread. In his emails, Alexander also spent months attacking government scientists and pushing to shape official statements to be more favorable to President Donald Trump. Uh, he essentially said, open up and let people get sick. And according to political reporters, officials say they believe he had the backing of the White House when he made these recommendations. Uh, senior Trump officials have testified before Congress that herd immunity was not at all part of the government strategy. And the HHS spokesperson actually responded to that report saying Alexander's suggestions were not and did not shape department strategy. They also noted that he is no longer with the department. The problem with these denials for many Americans is that they seem to have matched mm. what was coming from the top. They seem to have yeah, matched the message that was coming for, from the top. And so it's hard for, you know, everyday people watching this who are worried about this to, to see that this doesn't, you know, fit along in the puzzle. And the uh, herd immunity, everybody wants some sort of herd immunity, but two big problems with that, right? Mm. So one, we do not know much about what happens after you're infected and after you recover. Mm -hmm. right. We don't know much about that. We've seen people get sick again and get sicker. Yeah. And also, number two, when young people get sick, they go to the grocery store and spread it to people's grandparents. Mm. It's like, Do you look, know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, <laughs> it's like, let's let a tornado or earthquake hit and not tell anyone and see who survives it. That's what I kind of feel like when you see this because you're saying, just let it go, mm -hmm. and we'll see how it pans out. Now, there's something called natural immunity, right, which, which varies from person to person, but it's not sure if you can stay protected from getting sick once again. So even if that does happen, it doesn't say we're okay. But if we look at the uh, Trump administration and the right side of Republicans over and over saying, open the schools, it's okay, let's not stop moving forward, this kind of adds up to this. Yeah, oh, I, 100%. Well, I absolutely agree with you, Romeo. I think this is why so many people died and con contracted the virus. Clearly it is, because if there was someone, if someone, first of all, I don't believe in the, uh, the immunity thing. Like, for some reason, something about immunity just doesn't feel right that after you, you get three months to be immune because you saw someone like Debo who got it, he got it again, and then he passed away from it. You have someone like Jeremiah, for example, who had no underlying... Young and healthy. Yes. Young and healthy mm -hmm. and had no underlying health conditions, and here he was in the ICU for a month. So, first off, whoever came up with telling the American people that you were immune for three months, that was a terrible idea. Just like when I told you guys that they shouldn't have said, oh, let's move it from 14 days, um, isolation to seven. I think you do not need to give people, you give people an inch, they take a mile, and then now you have millions of people that have died and, you know, gotten the coronavirus. So I don't feel like we shouldn't have even told people about the immunity thing. I sh it should have never been mentioned. I'm just wondering how this doesn't classify as genocide mm. or, you know, crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just, I'm wondering how this, you know, from a legal standpoint, how this isn't classified as, you know, mass 
uh, you know, uh, uh, negligent homicide. Mm. Like I'm, I'm completely confused. Um, we're gonna have to get like a legal representative, um, you know, on, on the show so that we can ask them these types of questions because I'm, I'm really confused. You know, the the White House and Trump, they're trying to distance themselves from, um, from this situation. But the reality is, is that actions speak louder than words. You know, this is, right. it's just literally what we saw happening. I mean, I'm gonna predict that Trump is gonna face like a class action lawsuit. He has that's to. Gonna, that's gonna be part of what his legal troubles are going to be once he's you know booted from the, the white house and i'm going to be you know sitting there with my popcorn enjoying every single second of it you're a murderer yeah. it's murder it, and at you. the end of the day you it's think about it uh we don't want to confuse us so much by saying is it okay to go out and just be without a mask or is mm -hmm. it okay to continue to go out for the holidays no over 3600 people died yesterday mm -hmm. okay and we're talking day. over 17 million i'm not even gonna say cases 17 million people have contracted these are human right. beings right exactly so we cannot Put this out here and confuse people even more than what they are. You're right. It's just really frustrating because the idea is that, you know, young people getting this, they don't live in a bubble. Yeah. They mm -hmm. live in the world with the rest of the yeah. people who are at high risk. That's yeah. true. Who could die from this. The stats show you are most likely to die from this. Mm -hmm. And so I don't even see this how this would even make any sense to mm -hmm. anybody. I agree. You know, I the agree. six, seven people that got that email, how come they weren't horrified? And Exactly. You know what I mean? Speak I, you up. Know, Right, right. That's, I and think. this was sent in like July. It was like early. So why are we just now hearing about this like, you know, so many months later? Like I'm with you, Brooke. Like you should have been horrified and it should have been spreading like wildfires that there was someone out here you know, with negligence, like, you know, this was five months ago. So. A lot more sure. stories will be coming out, Absolutely. trust me. Yeah, exactly. Sure. And uh, speaking of stories that are going to infuriate you, I've got another one for you. Tyson Foods terminated seven employees at its plant in Waterloo, Iowa, after completing a probe into managers betting on, get this, how many workers would contract the coronavirus. The probe began in November after a lawsuit was filed alleging that management created a cash-in winner-take-all betting pool for how many employees would get sick from the virus. The investigation was led by former U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder. The behaviors exhibited by these individuals do not represent t the Tyson core values, which is why we took immediate and appropriate action to get to the truth, Tyson Foods CEO De uh, Dean Banks said in a statement on Wednesday. Now that the investigation has concluded, we are taking action based on the findings. The company said it traveled to Waterloo to meet with team members and community leaders to reinforce Tyson's commitment to them that to them and to the community. Um, I'm just going to say that audacity must be on the clearance rack at Marshall's or something mm -hmm. like that, because stories like this just are, are really, really like insane. You know, um, in terms of the lawsuit that was filed, um, the suspensions uh, before the firing took place uh, one day after a family of a deceased um, employee filed a lawsuit claiming fraud fraudulent misrepresent misrepresentations, gross negligence, and incorrigible and willful and wanton disregard for, um, for worker safety. It also went on to say, despite an uncontrolled COVID-19 outbreak, Tyson required its employees to work long hours in mm. cramped conditions. Moreover, despite the danger of COVID-19, Tyson failed to provide appropriate personal, personal protective equipment and failed to implement sufficient social distancing or safety measures to protect workers from the outbreak. Tyson... Mm -hmm. has got a serious problem on their hands, which mm -hmm. is why um, they are rushing to try to, you know, uh, suppress this story as much as possible. How um, do you do this? I, you know, right, and, and, and what you just kind of pointed out shows that the problem may not necessarily be that there were people betting, but that there was an environment right. that gave them something to bet on. Yeah. Well, I because say, are you taking, while you're firing these people, are you taking the precautions and creating an environment where there's nothing to bet on anyway because it's so safe, everyone is properly protecting themselves, you're keeping people apart, then nobody catches it from anybody at work, right? I, so, yeah, Brooke, you want to know why they were betting? They were betting because Tyson had 10,000 cases. Right. Uh, that's why. So, I mean, you think about it. Their employees, uh, yeah, right? ten thousand yeah. cases amongst your employees. <clears throat> Not that it was right, but for the silly people in the room, they're probably like, "Oh, I bet we're probably going to get to fifteen thousand. I bet we're going to get to twenty because it got so outrageous." Tyson never closed down despite the pandemic. Like Melissa said, they kept them working in you know unsafe conditions. So I mean, again, it's wrong, but. How did you let 10,000 cases happen and you're not shutting down? Wealth like, right. before like, health. Not the only problem. Wealth right. before health. That's right. why they got to make the money. And while these managers are sitting up in the office safe because they're not down in that environment, mm -hmm. that working environment, they're going to go home probably not getting COVID-19. But these people are putting their lives on the line for their families, right? 100%. They have to feed their families. They have to keep a job. And at the end of the day, to have to deal with this and know this is how they're looking at you. Why are you putting in the work? 
That's a problem. That's yeah. disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Now, while we're in the same vein of stories that are just making us a little uncomfortable, here's one more for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Pfizer CEO Albert Borla has not received his company's COVID-19 vaccine shot yet. Okay. So he said on Monday that he and other executives will not cut the line as U.S. officials kick off a massive effort to distribute the vaccine across the country. The vaccine, which Pfizer developed in partnership with the Germany-based company BioNTech is the first approved vaccine for emergency use in the U.S. to prevent COVID-19. The Food and Drug Administration on Friday authorized the vaccine for use in people 16 and older and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention on Sunday officially recommended its use. However, because there are limited doses available, the CDC has recommended that states prioritize healthcare workers and long-term care residents for initial distribution. Now, while Borla's company developed the vaccine, he's saying that he's not a frontline healthcare worker himself. So he's like, I'm 59. I'm in relatively good health. So there's no, uh, it's not appropriate for him to receive the vaccine before other people who needed more. He says that if he was vaccinated on camera, he does agree that it might help increase the public's willingness to receive it. But he also emphasized that none of the executives on board or the board members will be cutting the line. Now you guys know mm -hmm. how I feel about the on camera thing, but just, I just want to say <laughs> two things, right? You are the CEO. Absolutely, it would make a lot more people feel comfortable for the CEO of the vaccine that is supposed Talk to make it. millions it of people me. that is supposed to make no, us feel comfortable. Me. No, this no. is going to absolutely make us feel better to have you I one take furious. it on camera or off, and then two. So I feel like I understand that there's a line, but it feel it makes us feel like one, you don't trust your own vaccine, and then also uh, on the other side, he's probably saying I don't want to take advantage of my privilege, but like no, you need you develop you develop this. You want millions of people to trust it. You need to take the vaccine okay, first. Brooke, I, I would be ready. furious. Do we want rich white men to keep skipping the line and unfairly getting massive advantages in, in this, this world? In this case, I'm okay with that, not? but go ahead. But, well, so I keep the same energy. Well, he, he is, is absolutely not a frontline health care worker. Sure. He is not mm -hmm. elderly. Right. Every single one. The reason we have a line is because we do not have as many vaccines. But that is trying, somebody's grandfather's vaccine. We're also no, listen, trying. Okay, that go is ahead. somebody's grandfather's vaccine. That one vaccine. We do mm -hmm. not have enough. I, there are going to be more than 100 million people, possibly 200 million people that get it before I do, and I want it. He is not at the front of the line. He is a rich, white company executive, corporation executive. Noth those would be the only reasons that he but, would but, get this, but, and but that we're is trying unfair. We tried, but, we tried it out on a black, a young black female the other day. So she, she was a nurse. try it out right, on her. Right. It, this was tested. This has been being tested. We tried it out on hundreds of thousands of people, actually. Yeah. We didn't try it out on her. Well, this has been tested and federally approved. We gave yeah. it to her. Well, not to he make you guys. He is not a healthcare worker. Yeah. So not to make you guys. executive. Not to make you guys nervous or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But if you experience some adverse side effects to um, the COVID-19 vaccination, you're going to have nobody to sue. Um, in a rare move, um, the uh, Pfizer and Moderna have been been given by the federal gov government blanket immunity. So there's nobody to sue in court. You can't sue your um, employer if they make it a mandate to be um, inoculated in order to you know, continue working where you work. You won't be able to sue Moderna and Pfizer. You won't be able to sue, you won't be able to sue so anybody. Covered, which yeah. is another reason why I want him to be in line. I want him to show me, if you stand behind this product, you gotta get that. And look, there are millions, it's just in, millions of doses of vaccine are sitting in the warehouse right now, just read this, right? And they have no instructions of what to do with them, right? Mm -hmm. So we need these to get out to people, but there's some millions sitting around, this is what they're saying, but if you talk about a CEO, if you're talking about we as black people and how we feel about vaccines in general, for the most part, if you take a survey, still a lot of us, like Demi and myself, they're like, I'm gonna fall back. I don't believe in it just yet. So I, I see where you're going with it, Brooke, yeah. but I also say, look, man, I think for the people and moving forward that he should have been first in line saying, I believe in what I stand by what we're doing here. You know what's yeah. crazy? I think he believes he should be in first in line, too. I think the government restrictions are the only thing preventing to him to up. be first in line. Brooke, and you're telling me that you feel like his own vaccine, he cannot say, hey, guys, I know that I'm not a frontline worker, but this is my vaccine. I'm the CEO. I want to take one to make my people feel comfortable. You're telling me that he cannot do that as a CEO of the company. He cannot do that. And it's not his vaccine. 
vaccine. They they developed yeah, these vaccines with a lot right. of federal but you know money. What this we is mean, our Brooke. vaccine. Right. The people. And we yeah. should matter. Absolutely. He is we not do. a frontline healthcare worker. Well, He's a boss man in an office. Not He's not he... a scientist in there developing the vaccine. You're He's absolutely not right. They are frontline healthcare front front line workers. And name. they got it. I agree. He's behind that name. Now speaking of people that are not healthcare workers uh-huh. that are getting the vaccine. I just read earlier that Biden is is, uh, is going to get the COVID-19 in public next week and then Pence is going to get it on Friday. So I just read that actually on Twitter not too long ago that uh, Biden is scheduled to get it in front of the camera. So we'll see how that goes. <sighs> yeah. They're, they're also frontline workers too. They're not healthcare <laughs> workers, but like our national okay. security depends on them not dying. Right, yeah, right. That's To true. be continued. Right. Like, right. Uh, to be like, continued. Let's take okay. a pin in that conversation. Yeah, exactly. and run it back. Okay, we're, we're going to talk about it every day, I'm sure. <laughs> right. All right. So Max, the NFL hopes to honor the healthcare workers at the Super Bowl in Tampa, Florida in February, including by inviting vaccinated frontline workers to the event. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell announced on Wednesday. The owners of the league's 32 teams met virtually Wednesday to discuss the possibility to host healthcare workers, as well as plans to encourage people throughout the game to get the coronavirus vaccine and continue following safety guidelines such as wearing face masks in public. As we all know, these frontline workers are true American heroes, and we owe them our ongoing gratitude, Goodell said in the conference call with reporters Wednesday, according to the Washington Post. We also know that we need to rely on them for months to come to distribute vaccines and continue to treat all of those that are ill from COVID and other illnesses. Now, look, this hmm. would be great for TV. I would love to see this. Some fans in the stands at Super Bowl, especially the, uh, the frontline workers like that, because they've been putting out the work. As long as we have something still in the hospital taking care of their business. However, Uh-oh. this may set up something down the line. We're already hearing this, and I'm going to tell you, Qantas Airline. They mm-hmm. may get to the point where you have to show proof you've been vaccinated. No, they, no that to... they're they're already good. That's they've right? already made that announcement. Made that yeah. Montes is the first air li- airline to talk about right. that. And, and then you uh, have Ticketmaster too. Hold real quick, well, yeah. well, listen. Then yeah. you have Ticketmaster just saying they may move forward with that before you can go to a, a concert. concert. Mm-hmm. You have to show proof. So are we moving to a point where everyone has to have? Where we're it? walking around with vaccination records. Yeah. But also, these are none of these things are um, <laughs> essential outings. Flying internationally is not depend. I mean, not necessarily oh, it's, oh, internationally oh, no, it's, in it's, a pandemic. Well, not in a pandemic. It's not essential no, just in, in a pandemic. No, just in general. Also, just in general. Like that's what he's saying is that Qantas Airlines and, and probably forward. all of the other airlines, Ticketmaster, big corporations um, are going to start to require you to show proof of vaccination, walking around with vaccination. I don't records. think our airlines our domestic airlines will ever ask for that they will not eat they want the money they yeah. have sh- proven mm-hmm. throughout this that they want the money most of them wouldn't stop selling middle seats they have you sitting shoulder to shoulder True. in a pandemic because they want the money yeah no so no, i don't no, think that'll no, happen interna- domestically no, internationally, but internationally absolutely because yeah. there are the other countries are doing taking way different precautions they are than america but that's what goes back to going to a concert flying internationally are not essential things in a pandemic right so no, like out, you, so you, after, but you if Ticketmaster fans buy this and we have concerts coming up, you're trying to say you can't buy a ticket if, if you can't show proof? I don't want to go to a concert with somebody who's not vaccinated. If we get to that point, I don't want to. And Prior I, yeah. to this pandemic, you were going to concerts for people that were not vaccinated. There was no pandemic, though. Prior hmm. to, uh, But my understanding is like everybody doesn't get the shots. Romeo. Oh, yes. Sure. Switching what gears. What's okay. what your predictions on Super Bowl? I see what you're saying. Uh, Super Bowl? Who's, who's going to be there? Yeah, the yeah, Chiefs. Yeah. Can't see the Chiefs are going to be there. Okay, who are they playing? Uh, yeah. Who are they going to play? It won't be Tampa Bay. It's probably going to be Seattle. I'm, who's still get, do- I'm still getting adjusted to Tom Brady in a Tampa Bay uniform. Like I know. But who's going to do halftime is what we really want to know. All right. Definitely. Now, so while I gather all of my lovely comments that are happening on YouTube and Instagram, you guys, have you guys been um, on Twitter all day and been seeing December 21st trending? Yes. <laughs> yes. Apparently oh we're getting superpowers. Oh, my God. Black people are getting superpowers. I want to fly. Just, I hope that's my magic? superpower. You, 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 you jumped the gun, <laughs> Melissa, because I just want to let everyone know that um, so, uh, J- Jupiter, I can't even get my words together, Jupiter and Saturn are going to align again. And they said that this would unlock the real DNA of black people. People only so we are going to get superpowers it's not for real guys but i want to know from you guys really quick what would your superpower be like i think mine would be to read men's mind i want to know hilarious you don't even want it just man you don't even I want to read i, I could have <laughs> predicted that Very from her specific. No. that's all i want to know i want to be able to read your mind you know the movie with uh taraji where she could hear what they're thinking what that's my super- yes that's mm-hmm. my superpower romeo and brooke what about you Go I ahead, don't Brooke. No, I have to think about it. Maybe uh, being invisible. Oh, okay. invisible. Romeo. Yeah. Mm, okay, I like that. Um, it's not <laughs> trying know. to read y'all mind because we never get that right. Um, I like the invisible. Okay, sorry, just make me a fly on the wall. What, All right, cool. Well, we'll give that? you. We'll give you. I know. Put you on the spot. 
people Melissa, thinking, like, what about me? Uh, yeah, no, I, I want I want to be able to time travel. Oh, time travel. I, I want that. I want that ability. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, now, really quick on YouTube. Shout out to my guy, James Hudson. He says he loves Fox Soul. We love you, James. Also, uh, Tech Nine, not the real Tech Nine. He says Pfizer is um, that the, the uh, vaccine is rushed and that people have every right to be skeptical about it, especially coming from the company with a history like Pfizer. So I'm going to mm. gather some more comments because you guys are really talking about what we were just talking about.